In this week's Super Soul short film, the poignant reflection on love, death, devotion, and a life lived with purpose that captured the hearts of readers around the world. Paul Kalanithi spent most of his life striving toward the future. Passionate about both science and writing, he majored in English and biology at Stanford and went on to earn a master's degree in English literature. He then pursued a second master's in philosophy from Cambridge. If you asked me when I was 17, you know, what I'd be doing with my life, I would have said, oh, I'd definitely be a writer. But found after I completed my undergraduate studies that medicine was, in fact, the perfect place for the kinds of things I was interested in and passionate about. Paul met his wife, Lucy, during their first year at Yale Medical School. Four years later, they married before moving west to begin their residencies at Stanford. But at age 36, as Paul was close to finishing nearly a decade of training as a neurosurgeon, he received a devastating diagnosis. Stage 4 lung cancer. In that single moment, Paul says, every dream he had for his future disappeared. You're always thinking about five years down the line, what are you going to be doing? And that number has no meaning for me anymore. I now spend just most of my time thinking about the present and you know what I plan to do each day, each hour, each minute. Clocks used to sort of rule everything are now kind of irrelevant to me. Having a terminal illness, you know, kind of forces you to think about your life and, and what matters to you. Forced to confront their new reality, Paul and Lucy realigned their relationship, focusing on what mattered most. There were a couple things that were important to him. One was um, to return to work as a neurosurgeon and then to start writing. Um, those were sort of the two big professional dreams that he had. Then he had sort of a sentimental thing that he really wanted to do, which was to go back to the destination that we went to on our honeymoon. It was that same kind of feeling of a celebration or a commitment. We still had those same feelings, even though he was dying. I think the thing that Paul really taught me and showed me is this really simple idea that life is not about avoiding suffering, it's about finding meaning. Part of creating that meaning was to start a family. The decision to have children after I was diagnosed was probably the biggest decision that Lucy and I had to make. But kind of the way we ended up thinking about it is that, well, you know, even if you're dying, until the day you actually die, you're living. Uh, and for me, it was, a, it was important to know that Lucy would have a family after I was gone. I asked him this question, is it gonna make the fact of dying even more painful for you? And he said this really amazing thing. He said, wouldn't it be great if it did make it more painful? Paul and Lucy welcomed their daughter, Katie, on July 4th, 2014. Since Katie's birth, my time with her has had a, a very you know, peculiar and free nature. I mean, it's all sort of feels to me like uh, bonus time, you know, in the sense that you know, in all probability, uh, I won't live long enough for her to remember me. But at the same time, every day is a, you know, exciting, rewarding, meaningful time to spend with her. Looking into those eyes um, feels like a real connection to Paul. There was sort of this contrast between dying and growing or living, and it was sort of all happening at the same time. And I feel like one of the big challenges and privileges of my life is to help her understand that narrative of where she came from and who her dad was. Um, and then she and I are together going forward. Paul Kalanithi died on March 9th, 2015, at the age of 37. 
his spirit and his wisdom live on in his New York Times best-selling memoir, When Breath Becomes Air. Paul, as many of us are, was interested in the question of what makes my life meaningful? It's a careful balance. If you don't think about the bad case, you know, that ending is going to be very rough on you and your family. But if you don't think about the good case, you're going to miss an opportunity to really make the most out of, out of your, your life and time. <laughs> 